Today we are looking at the Greyhill Incident, which is a game about aliens and also about uh, whatever this is supposed to mean. What? Is that Brandon? What's up? Fuck. The Grey Hill Incident is a game that was originally overwhelmingly negative, but has since become mixed due to the prolific rise in people posting about getting sucked off by aliens in the reviews. This is probably because of the Charlie stream, but I actually came up with this exact same joke in game, so I should get 20% of his views from that video onto this video for plagiarism. Ah, fuck you, bud. Oh god, the alien got me. He's sucking me off. But because we all know the fat cats over at YouTube will not grant me justice, we need to fulfill a quick contractual obligation. That's right, today's video is brought to you by Atlas VPN. If you're watching a YouTube video right now, let's be honest, you know what a VPN is. So why aren't you using one to protect your online privacy? And more importantly, why not start now with Atlas, which is currently offering one of the best deals in the market. Right now with Atlas VPN, you can get great online protection for just $1.83 a month with three months extra and a 30 day money back guarantee so you have nothing to lose. A dollar and 83 cents is the amount of money a bug has. So what are you doing? Get out the wallet and click on my link down in the description to support the channel and stop the spirits of your enemies from getting into your PC through the online cloud. But that is not all my friends. With this VPN, demons will not be able to see your online searches. Powerful Japanese Oni will not be able to install malware onto your system, and the goblins of Welsh folklore will help you locate the best online deals when you're buying really annoying stuff like airline tickets. And you can do all of this on unlimited devices with just one subscription. But here's the deal. I know you guys need an example. If you're on this video, you're into the paranormal and you probably like scary movies. Let's say you want to get drunk with your friends one night and watch all seven paranormal activity movies in a row. You finish the first movie, but oh no, all the other ones are region locked. Well, guess what? Big guy, a couple of clicks here, and we're British now. Let's get this movie marathon on the road. If you want to be able to protect your online connection from the hat man sniffing your data and also support this channel, please check the link down in the description and thank you, Atlas VPN. Grey Hill Incident is a classic asset flip horror game. We got all the classic asset store packs in here, including Cal. Ordinarily, this is not a game I would review, but once again, for the second time since 2017, aliens are massively mainstream and for some reason being discussed in Congress, which I guess is better than them talking about which kid they plan on eating this week or whatever those freaks do. So I thought, yeah, I'll review a terrible alien game as an excuse to talk about aliens in a video. What's the worst thing that could happen? I was then taken on a terrible journey with a spiritual ending. The first thing you're going to notice about the Greyhill incident is that the dialogue was written by insane people. Please up together. Have you seen the TV news? No one <laughs> will help us. Have you seen the We're TV all news? Up our windows currently. I know how to shoot because of the Vietnam War and you can this handle the dialogue is fucking crazy. This is like drive to our holiday Okay, hang on. I need Don't to figure out how I shot your son's hat off while wearing it when I was drunk at the barbecue last well, summer. Brandon, Imagine how you I can still have to pay for that. Sober. <sighs> but leaving town tomorrow sounds like a good idea. I'll keep you updated. Over and out. The next thing you're going to notice is that the game has never heard of the concept of tone. Imagine a man witnessing his son getting abducted by aliens. Now, imagine that man is talking to his friend. Imagine what they would sound like. Here is what this game thinks it would sound like. Ryan, thank God you're here. Are you okay? No! Nothing is okay! They abducted Henry. I have to find a way inside that UFO. 
Meanwhile, I've been trying to get to Brandon's house because he's in trouble too. We'll help you, Ryan. The cars don't drive anymore, but maybe this old biplane does. We could use the biplane to get near the UFO. That seems like a long shot. But I guess it's our only option. To be fair though, I'm not going to sit here and talk about how much this game sucks. Should you buy it for $24? No. But I love the fact that anyone can download like three pieces of free software, toss some money into the asset store, and get really passionate about making something terrible. That's generally good for the gaming community. After this guy makes like three or four of the worst games of all time, he might make something good. That's how it works. Greyhill Incident is exactly what you would expect a micro indie horror game to be. Everything about this game is going to piss you off, and the majority of the experience is a walking sim. <laughs> I hate these fucking aliens so much, dude. I've never hated anyone more than I hate these goddamn aliens. But you can hit a gray alien in the head with a baseball bat and reload a revolver while it's on the ground, which is an extremely funny vibe. The main goal of this game is simple. You walk from one end of this town to the other without getting stopped by an alien the same size as an eight-year-old. Do you think you're strong enough to be able to fight two or possibly even three elementary school children with a baseball bat? Do you feel like you're a good enough shot to shoot one in the head with a 357 Magnum from three feet away? If any of these sound impossible to you, then you will find the iconic alien villain of the Grey Hill Incident terrifying. Personally, I think I could tear one of these guys apart with my bare hands like a chimpanzee. As you walk across town, you will need to do one of three things. Press a button to pick up an item, fight an alien, or hide from an alien. I can't speak much to number three because I never actually needed to use the hiding mechanic, and even if I wanted to, there isn't really much of an opportunity. However, I am more than willing to talk about the two and a half mechanics involved in fighting the aliens. You can either hit an alien in the head with a bat three times to knock it over, or you can shoot it twice to kill it. That's it. Don't let him get you. Now, originally I wanted to do more of a review on this game. I thought maybe, you know, there would be some stuff to talk about here. I thought maybe there would be some UFO lore in here, but no, the only real references are like some book covers and references to anal probes, which... The anal probe thing really never should have been as famous of an addition to UFO canon as it was. The entire probe meme comes from Whitley Strieber, and that's basically it. There has never been a time in the history of the UFO mythos where it was commonly reported that aliens would put a Hitachi in your ass. There was just even less to this game than I had initially planned. I mean... It's basically a student game. It's a few dumbasses with a dream trying to make a game. It's a triumph this thing even shipped. Do you really need me to break down Slender, but this time you're collecting tinfoil and it's aliens? You really don't. You never needed that. If you're here for the review, don't buy this for $24 unless you're stupid enough to be a content creator as a job like me or this other very small creator. Like... Do you really want me to spend 30 minutes bitching about how a game made by a college student has bad sound design? Is this what you're supposed to do on YouTube now? What have they done to us? Luckily though, reviewing this game was never the point of the video. You see, the point of this video was to trick you into sitting still long enough to get to this point where you're already in bed and can't get up to pick something else. And let me tell you, you're going to want to stick around for this one because I am unveiling something in this video that absolutely cannot be missed. Obviously, this game revolves around the Grey Alien. But have you ever thought to yourself, why is the Grey Alien? Why is this the most iconic alien character design in human history? Why is it that when someone thinks of an alien, they think of this? We have so many other aliens. The Klingons from Star Trek... Yoda, the monster from a movie that's literally called Alien. So, how did this become the universal symbol for an alien worldwide? 
Well, first of all, it's maybe the greatest character design in history. Just a little guy. Easy to draw. No one has a trademark on the gray alien, so you can just slap one on a hat and your merch store is good to go. He flies around in a little disc, which is equally iconic. I don't have time to draw the fucking Millennial Falcon next to a racist caricature every time I want to convey an abstract concept. We say the word iconic all the time, so now it just sort of means nothing, but the gray alien is literally iconic. It's an icon. It's a modern day hieroglyph. If you see this face, you know what the fuck is up. So where did it come from? Well, if you do research on this kind of thing, the first thing you're going to get is the Betty and Barney Hill abduction. The Betty and Barney Hill abduction has been talked about a billion times on a million different podcasts, YouTube channels, UFO documentaries, and TV shows. I'm not going to waste time by telling you the entire story, but for people that have never heard about it, here are the bullet points. In 1961, Betty and Barney Hill were driving around rural New Hampshire. They saw some lights in the sky, a UFO landed, and they were taken on board by the aliens. There were some experiments done, Betty had a fun interaction with one alien who showed her a star map and shit, and then they were returned to their car with no memory of the event and a bunch of missing time as if they had blacked out. Eventually, they started having weird nightmares. They go and get hypnotic regression therapy to recover their lost memories, and wouldn't you know it, their description of the aliens in question are the stereotypical gray alien. This is widely regarded as the moment this type of alien goes mainstream, but that isn't the end of the story. The first thing that skeptics started to point out was, the same year these two were abducted, there was an episode of The Outer Limits that aired. In that episode, there were gray aliens. So, case closed, right? Betty and Barney Hill saw that episode, made up the story, or maybe their hypnotic regression, which has been proven to be unreliable, made them misremember something they saw on TV. The only problem with this theory is that the aliens in that episode look like this, which, despite the fact that skeptics have been beating this horse for decades, in my opinion, and the opinion of many others, looks fucking nothing like the classic Grey. So let's go back even further. Two sources that often get mentioned are two sci-fi pieces from the 1890s. The first one is a book from 1891 called Meta, A Tale of the Future, written by Kenneth Fallingsby. What? Did I? Did, this is a typo? And the second one is from an 1893 article called The Man of Year Million by H.G. Wells. Now, if we get the PDF of the first book, we can actually see the description of the aliens in question, which says, I carefully scrutinized this odd-looking couple. They were not more than four feet high with very large heads and small bodies and limbs. That proportion of the body which contains the principal organs of digestion seemed to be almost entirely awanting, but their chests were more than fairly well developed. For clothing, they wore a wrapping of white silky material bound closely round the body and forming a kind of kilt around the upper proportions of their limbs. On their feet, they had light shoes, and to each ankle was secured a circular weight of considerable size formed of a metal which looked like newly scraped lead. Each weight was in two pieces bound together by a silken cord let into a circular recess near the top. On their head, there was no covering, and the little hair they had was fine in texture and of a dark brown color. It formed a slight fringe from the temples around the back of the head, and when viewed from the head behind, strongly resembled an egg in a brown-edged egg cup. Their eyes had a bright, far-seeing look, wistful and dreamy with all, pale in color and very prominent. There was a sad, thoughtful look on their faces, that made me feel that nothing I could say would induce them to laugh. Their features were marked, and the skin was clear almost to transparency. Judging from the baldness of their heads and the solemnity of their man, I would have said that they were about 70 years old. But judging from their limbs and appearance of their skin, I would have guessed that their age was 20 to 25. In fact, they were very grave, diminutive, young old men of some new type of humanity unknown to my experience. Now, to me, this description is pretty far off. They have the big heads, they're short, and they have skinny limbs, but they also have hair. The eyes don't really match at all and are described as being 
gray or pale, and the skin is described as being almost translucent. So this one doesn't really fit either. Let's move on to the man of year million. Luckily, we don't have to bother with a long-winded description here because we have a few pictures. Now these definitely look closer to what we have been trying to get at, but it's still not quite there. These guys are also described as hopping on their hands, which is completely left field. Both of these examples are good at pointing out one thing though. As humans, we know that our most important feature is our brain, so whenever we are trying to come up with a higher being than us, we always give them a huge head. Big head means a big brain, and if you want to be smarter than us, you must have a way bigger brain. Another example of something that may be the origin of the gray alien is this famous 1918 drawing of a being called Lom. Lom was a being that famous occultist maniac Aleister Crowley was allegedly in contact with. Some even advanced the theory that Lom is a demon and that Crowley opened up a dimensional gate with his rituals and that all of the gray aliens since then have been evil entities coming through that open portal. Here's one more example from a 1933 book, The Unknown Danger, by Gustav Sandgren. The creatures did not resemble any race of humans. They were short, shorter than the average Japanese, and their heads were big and bald with strong, square foreheads and very small noses and mouths and weak chins. What was most extraordinary about them was the eyes, large, dark, gleaming with a sharp gaze. They wore clothes made of soft gray fabric, and their limbs seemed to be similar to those of humans. I present all of these examples, not because I think any of them are the source for the gray alien, but to show that it appears that there is no one source for the image. It looks like a bunch of humans all independently had the idea of a being that looked like this, and this process wasn't collaborative because it took place over 70 plus years in an environment without mass media and mass information transfer that we have today. I seriously doubt that Betty and Barney Hill, who by all accounts were normal people with normal jobs and an above average investment in their community, had encyclopedic knowledge of old obscure science fiction written before their time or were interested enough in occultist culture to know about Lom. But this is all weird, right? It's weird that there was what looks like some sort of strange human instinct to converge on this form. Why did so many people seem to take the same shot in the dark that an alien being would sort of look like this? There's an old theory about the alien abduction phenomenon that what the vision of the gray alien that people report seeing during abductions actually is is a combination of sleep paralysis and memories from your own birth. As an infant, your shitty, underdeveloped eyes couldn't make out fine details, so all you saw on the faces of the people around you were blank faces and huge dark eyes. Is it possible that that's what this archetype is? Some barely perceptible primordial memory that causes us to all look at a guy with a big head and huge eyes and say, this means something. Either way, in 1987, something came along that changed the game. Whitley Strieber released the book Communion, all about his allegedly true encounter with alien beings. One of the covers looked like this. This, to me, is probably what we can trace the modern gray alien back to. This cover took all of the previous archetypes from decades past and distilled them down into the now familiar face. But even so, is it really correct to say this is the origin of the gray? This, in my opinion, is certainly even more so than the Betty and Barney Hill abduction, the gray alien's debut into mainstream folklore, but it clearly isn't the origin of the idea. Maybe humans just aren't very creative, and we all thought, of course, a smart guy from space would have a big head. Maybe it's some kind of primordial memory of the face of the nurse who delivered us. Maybe these things are fucking real. Or maybe the most insane option of all, the gray alien, is a thought form manifested over a century of people all converging on the same idea. 
maybe we are just being haunted by a rogue tulpoid menace walking through our walls at night and taking us into space. Maybe the gray alien exists because we believe it exists. Either way, the image of the gray is now permanently etched into the popular imagination and culture. And here we are, 62 years after Betty and Barney Hill went to space with the boys, and the iconic gray alien is still inspiring art like the Gray Hill incident. And now that we have brought it full circle, there has been a lead that I have been burying. You see, like all games, Gray Hill Incident has an ending, but it's an ending that has to be seen to be believed. The following is an edited version of how my gameplay stream ended. <clears throat> oh, it abducted me. Uh-oh. Boys? Boys, I can't move, boys? Oh, we're getting abducted. <clears throat> Finally, we're in the third act. We out here doing a couple of things, boys. Is it working? Henry? I just got an achievement called The Ending. It's happening. That was it? You just get abducted and that's the end of the game? You don't even get the resolution? Did they just not finish it? <clears throat> Hang on. Let's, let's let it cook. Alright, see ya. Okay, we're good. Our man looks like he's in New Mexico or Nevada. Yep. Things seem to have worked out pretty good for Rachel and me. Good. I hate that we don't know what happened on the UFO to Ryan and the others, but... Well, after Ryan was abducted, his dog Max came along, and together we're now on our way to meet this mysterious man. I mean, that was the Greyhill incident. Time for a new book, yeah? God, I hope I'll find the publisher this time. Ah, look at me. Rambling again. Well, I hope you folks enjoyed yourself. Catch you on later down the road. Hey, Rachel. What was your favorite part about the story of Grey Hill? <sighs> Bob? Who are you just talking to? Rascal Flats playing right now? Am I on drugs? What the fuck is going on? I am losing my fucking mind. What the fuck? Are we gonna go to credits? Or are we just gonna play the song? What the fuck, dude? Did he just say something? Holy Ghost? Is this a Christian rock song? <laughs> what the fuck, dude? <laughs> There's no way they licensed this, right? This is literally the most insane ending to a fucking game I've ever experienced. I cannot believe it. There's not even credits. It's just a black screen. Well, that was the Grey Hill incident. Okay, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on, boys. Let's do a little bit of detective work. Let's go to the credits here. There's no fucking way they don't have that song credited. Oh, here it is. This is Our World by Ryan White Maloney. What type of guy is Ryan White Maloney? Ryan White Maloney is a powerhouse and a seasoned performer mixing alt-country, classic rock, R&B, and hip-hop. Guys. <laughs> There's no- okay, this is like a guy. He was on The Voice. This is like a dude. There is no fucking way they licensed that song. Absolutely no shot. 
they licensed it. What? Okay, it says this is our world parentheses Grey Hill Incident soundtrack. Did they like... Did he make this song for this game? There's no fucking way that's true. What is happening here? Guys, I have to get to the bottom of this mystery. Like, if they didn't license that song, these guys could get in, like, serious legal trouble. Dude, if it's... <clears throat> if the song has the game in the credits, you can't find it anywhere on the internet, and the only place it is is on the fan pack on Steam, I am led to believe... Th that song may have been commissioned for this game. Like, I don't know what other conclusion I'm supposed to draw from that. Ryan sings and performs songs if you write the lyrics for him on Fiverr. Wait, how much? I will create up to a three-minute custom song or finish your song mix and mass for... I could pay this guy $420 to do a song for a video. <laughs> no fucking way. I could pay this dude a, a completely insignificant amount of money to write me like a ridiculous pop country theme song and just write it off as a business expense. Holy shit, guys. And it was after this moment that I realized I know a lot about alien and UFO history and new age lore. I know I can write a better alien themed pop country song. So I spent a night in my room, dropping only my hardest bars. And then I messaged Ryan White Maloney on Fiverr, and I said, hey man, are you ready to change the world? And this was the result. I feel the vibes, the vibration, turn up the signal from a number station, seed cords humming on a ley line. Up a new formation. I check on the cards, no tower. Looking at the stars, getting better by the hour. Sasquatch banging on a tree line. Howling out a smooth flirtation. Well, I'm heading to a new age. Go singing on the radio.